Dry aged beef is more flavorful, more tender, and the ultimate beefy experience. But can we make it even better? But that's simply not possible. Why not? Today, I'm gonna try injecting a brisket, a rib roast, and a tenderloin with unique liquids prior to dry aging to see if we can achieve max flavor. Max flavor? Max flavor. Is this the key to the best steaks ever, or have I completely lost my mind? Let's find out. First things first, what exactly is dry aged beef, and how on earth could something that looks like this actually taste good? This right here is a rib roast that I've been dry aging for about 50 days. The outside is extremely dried out, and it kind of looks like a rock. It's, uh, it's Dwayne Johnson. And slowly but surely, over the course of many weeks, the meat loses moisture as the tenderness and flavor improves. Well, guys, I may have spoken a little too soon. This is an absolute disaster. This actually hasn't happened for a very long time. Now, a good dry-aged steak will usually still be nice and red in the middle, but as you can see, we have these, like, pockets of literally rotten meat at this point. But what this shows is that dry aging is a bit of a finicky process and the conditions need to be perfect for it to turn out all right. But luckily, I happen to be a meat hoarder, so I have, it's actually a steak from 2021, but this right here is a perfectly dry aged steak that we'll use as our example. As you can see, the meat is still nice and red. And to get from this to this, I had to remove that exterior pellicle that forms during the dry aging process. And as I mentioned, there are two primary benefits to dry aging. Not only is it gonna be a lot more tender by the end of it, but as that moisture comes out, the flavor is really going to condense, almost described as like nutty or kind of funky in flavor. Sounds like someone wants to get funky. Time to find out if I'm going to survive eating a over two year old dry aged steak. Well, wow. sometimes dry aged steaks are a little more dry. This is extremely juicy. I cannot believe how old this is. This is phenomenal. But what I'm concerned about is that we're gonna be injecting the steak prior to dry aging, and it feels like it might kind of create these pockets or bubbles in there. Might cause a huge disaster with this video. There's only one way to find out. And our first piece of meat is this guy here. The brisket. This is a whole packer brisket, so it has the point and the flat still attached. And we're gonna do zero trimming to have less loss by the end of it. As you can see, it's pretty much completely covered in fat, which is always what you're looking for when dry aging. Kind of looks like a tequila sunrise. Actually, not bad. Why do we do these things? So we're just gonna completely inject this thing, getting as much in there as possible. Oh! Having flashbacks when I gave Kyle those injections. All right, this shouldn't hurt one bit. <sighs> now that we've successfully gone buffalo sauce all over me, my kitchen, my sister, and my camera, we're just gonna top it off with a little bit more over the top, just for good measure. You really wanna get that buffalo flavor in there. Should be good to go. And our next specimen is this guy right here, a rib roast. And for this one, I'm combining whiskey and maple syrup for almost like an old fashioned cocktail vibe. Now the goal here is to not get this all over my kitchen or my sister. Let's see how this goes. Oh, and just like that, our rib roast is completely filled to the brim, it is literally firm. But either way, let's move on to the tenderloin. Next up, the tenderloin. This is one of the leanest steaks on the cow, but it's also super tender and that's why people love it. And as you can see, we have a thinner side here and also a thicker side here. This is called the head. What I think I'm gonna do is actually remove it for a more uniform shape. And for this injection, we're using Wagyu tallow, AKA Wagyu beef fat. For a guy that claims to hate the word, I sure do say it a lot, but we got that beautiful liquid gold. Time to get this injected, and I'm hoping that the Wagyu fat's gonna make this tenderloin a lot more juicy than it would normally be. We'll do one final layer over the top. Ooh, that was a lot. Just to kind of cover it and hopefully reduce the amount of trimming and waste there is by the end of it. And just like that, all of our roasts are completely injected. Only time will tell how these will turn out. Time to go in the dry ager. I'm gonna go take a roughly 30 day nap. See you later. All right, guys, time to let our steak sit for 30 full days. But why not be productive? It is. 2024 after all, the perfect time to work on yourself. Personally, I wanna find better ways to stay focused and develop better work-life balance. Now, I used to think cooking tons of medium rare steaks was the best way to achieve these goals. It turns out there's way better ways to do it, which is why I'm excited to share that the sponsor of today's video is BetterHelp. 
Now, especially as a guy, I've always felt that getting into therapy was intimidating, but BetterHelp makes starting therapy a lot easier. And if you click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash meetguy, you'll get 10% off your first month. BetterHelp will quickly match you with one of over 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs and preferences. And you can have your sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even messaging, whatever is most comfortable and convenient for you. On top of that, you have full flexibility to switch therapists at the click of a button at no extra cost. So hit the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash meetguy to support the channel and join the over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to start living a healthier life. And let's get back to the video. All right, guys, the time is finally here. It has been 35 full days of dry aging, but I gotta be honest, there is a smell coming out of that dry ager. Oh man, something is just not right in here, but to be fair, I do have tons of very random experiments going on here. So it could be anything, including a fully covered golden steak, but that's a video for a complete other time. Let's see what we got. And we have our buffalo sauce dry aged brisket, our maple whiskey injected dry aged ribeye, and last but not least, our wagyu tallow tenderloin that kind of looks like a little worm. And I have to say, these things are looking absolutely wild, but I have news, and it happens to be good news. These things actually don't smell bad at all. We're only gonna know for sure when we cut into them, but as of now, I'm feeling pretty good. And starting over here with our buffalo dry age brisket, feels pretty similar to a normal dry age brisket, though of course the big difference is that crazy orange situation going on the outside. Kind of reminds me of like, the surface of Mars. I cannot wait to slice into this one. And over here we have our maple whiskey dry aged ribeye. By far the least crazy looking out of the bunch. Kind of just looks like a regular normal dry aged rib roast. And also doesn't really smell any different. And last but not least, we have our Wagyu tallow injected and covered tenderloin. Now I have to say this one is a bit more soft to the touch than the other ones. And also at room temp, this Wagyu tallow is starting to melt. It's getting everywhere, so it's time to slice. Okay, and we are gonna start here by trimming up our buffalo dry aged brisket. Just like any other dry aged project, we need to remove that pellicle. You call that a knife? This is a knife. That's a knife. Start by taking a slice right off the side here. Definitely smells a bit like buffalo, shockingly. You can definitely see some of those pockets of buffalo sauce, and it almost looks like it's solidified in a way. It's like buffalo sauce marble. We have this thin area right here. It's gonna remove pretty much all of it. These streaks of orange just look so cool. So as much as I love our giant tuna slicer, it does not make sense to slice the brisket with it. So we're going back to the baby knife. And just like normal on the flat side, I'm aiming to leave about a quarter of an inch of fat. Looking pretty good on this side. Let's trim with the back. Just getting the entirety of this outer shell trimmed off but also doing my best not to cut too deeply into the meat. We want as much of that on there as possible. And just like that, we are all trimmed up. It is time to season, and we're keeping it extremely simple. Literally just 50% black pepper, 50% salt. We really wanna taste the flavor of the meat, and also, hopefully, that buffalo flavor. Gotta get those edges, and of course, the bottom. And let's get her on the grill. And next up, our whiskey maple dry aged rib roast. This one, by far the least intimidating visually. Just going for a nice clean slice. Do you actually call that a knife? I mean, this is literally a machete, but let's do it. And I do not know exactly what I was expecting, but this is certainly not it. Really don't see much of a difference from that whiskey or maple. And when it comes to the smell, I can kind of get a little bit of whiskey, but this is just a dry aged steak. I mean, I guess there are a few cracks here, which is clearly where the injector went, but it is for sure not rotten or anything, which I'm happy about. But of course, what matters most is how it tastes. Like all dry aged steaks, we have this outer pellicle that we'll make sure to remove. We'll just hit it with some kosher salt and black pepper. Once again, really want to keep the seasoning simple so we can taste those flavors. Let's hit the grill. And let's check her out. 
And as you can see, that cat muscle is really separating in a pretty interesting looking crust. It's almost a bit patchy. Like some of it is really nicely charred, other parts not as much. My assumption is that has to do with that maple syrup in there. Slicing into it, I just got a whiff of that whiskey. Interesting. I'm actually gonna remove the cap and kind of slice that separately. This part right here is the best of the best. I mean, this thing feels just super tender. I am dying to go for a bite here. You gotta wait for the taste test. Dude. It's ridiculous. And it is finally time to slice into our tenderloin. I might be most excited for this one. We literally gave it like artificial marbling. No idea what it's gonna look like. And we'll go right down the middle. No, no, no. Where are you getting all these knives? I got a guy. I am the guy. One slicer. Whoa. That is sick. That's a mighty way five right there. Dang, that is nuts. And the cool thing for me is how close this resembles real marbling. Like it didn't go in there and kind of form a big bubble or pocket. This almost looks like Wagyu. And I'll just take a relatively thin steak here. It's so tender. And the outside here is very, very soft. Because we covered it in that Wagyu, it kind of protected the meat. I don't think there's gonna be too much trimming or waste when it comes to this steak. But I will still just kind of trim off some of the harder pieces. This right here looks pretty good. We'll just hit it with some salt and once again, black pepper. And we'll get it on the grill. Pretty nice crust on there. Let's slice her up. And as expected, this is feeling extremely tender. Gotta go for a bite. Max, the brisket. Oh yeah. Ta-da. Hot potato. All right, guys, it is time for the moment we've all been waiting for. 30 days dry aged, completely injected with buffalo sauce. No idea what it's gonna look like in there. Let's do it. Just go right down the middle. Dang, this thing just looks completely ridiculous. Super juicy. Obviously there's that orange from the buffalo sauce. I don't exactly know what I was expecting, but this is pretty wild. And we have finally made it. Gotta say that was a long 30 days. I am dying to finally taste these. I'm gonna start over here with the rib roast. Mm. The time, it's like he just knows that I'm eating. I'm in the middle of a taste test, my man. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. You definitely get that dry aged flavor, but it's also sweet from the maple syrup and it kind of caramelized. Maybe the whiskey is a little too strong. Next time I'll probably go a little higher with the maple syrup, a little less with the whiskey. That is a huge success. Moving on to the tenderloin. Mm. Definitely get that funkiness more so than the last one. Is it more juicy with adding all that kind of artificial marbling? It is hard to say. I feel like a lot of it did come out, but that was a very delicious and pretty moist bite. And last but not least, it is time for the brisket. By far the one I'm most excited for. This one looked completely ridiculous. Ooh, it is super tender. You definitely get that buffalo flavor and paired with that funkiness from the dry age. It is sort of like a blue cheese buffalo situation, but would I do it again? Kind of hard to say, beef and buffalo sauce aren't like the perfect pairing, but as a one-time bite, that is phenomenal. But the real question is, which one of these are my favorite? The ribeye with that sweetness from the maple is for sure something I would repeat. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Also, make sure to drop a like and comment on this video. Let me know what you thought of it, and I'll see you next time.